American author Harold Frederick penned the novel The Damnation of Theron Ware, 1896, alternatively titled The Illumination in Britain, which delves into the journey of a young Methodist pastor in 19th century upstate New York who begins to question his beliefs and calling. Through the lens of literary realism, the book explores a myriad of contemporary political, philosophical, and theological issues that plagued provincial America during this historical period. These issues encompassed ongoing debates surrounding women's rights, the clash between religion and science, and the tension between tradition and reform. Notably, according to Publishers Weekly, Frederick's novel secured the fifth spot on the best-selling books list in the United States for the year 1896. The protagonist, Theron Ware, serves as a young Methodist minister stationed in the fictional town of Octavius in upstate New York, a setting believed to be inspired by Utica, nestled in the Adirondacks. Frederick characterizes Theron as an ambitious individual whose aspirations far surpass his actual abilities. Theron proves himself to be foolish, weak-willed, and susceptible to self-deception. He and his wife, Alice, grapple with the challenges of maintaining financial stability while fulfilling the demanding responsibilities associated with leading a congregation, a role that demands significant time and monetary investments. While Theron is a well-liked pastor, the church trustees reprimand him for employing language that is deemed too complex, fearing it may drive members of the congregation to the nearby Catholic churches. It is within one of these Catholic churches that Theron encounters Father Forbes, a priest. Intrigued by the encounter, Theron contemplates the origins of the animosity between Catholics and Protestants, including his own Methodist faith. Despite Alice's inherent prejudice against Catholics, Theron finds himself spending increasing amounts of time with Forbes. During one of his visits to Forbes's residence to borrow books, Theron encounters Dr. Ledsmer, an elderly irreligious man who also shares some books with him. Ledsmer holds disdain for the organ music played in churches and dismisses all forms of art as decadent. Despite finding Ledsmer's ideas simultaneously repulsive and captivating, Theron becomes fascinated by the conversations they engage in. On his way home, Theron is captivated by the enchanting music played by Celia Madden, the organist at Father Forbes's church. Drawn to the melodies, he finds himself stepping into a Catholic church for the very first time. Engaging in conversation with Celia, they discuss their shared love for music. Celia expresses her inability to befriend Dr. Ledsmer due to his disdain for art and music. Later that night, Alice voices her frustration over the neighbor's loud piano practice. Although Theron keeps his thoughts to himself, he secretly revels in the sound of the neighboring piano. In the following weeks, Theron becomes occupied with his own church duties, leaving him with little time to see Forbes, Celia, or Dr. Ledsmer. However, during a rare moment of respite, he indulges in reading the books borrowed from Dr. Ledsmer. He becomes engrossed in the texts, even fabricating a headache to stay up and continue reading, deceiving Alice in the process. Longing for a life that grants him the freedom of independent thought, unrestricted by the rigid expectations of the church trustees, Theron contemplates leaving his ministerial path. Among the trustees, he develops a certain admiration for Levi Gorringe, who is not a professed Methodist. Meanwhile, the Wares seek assistance from Sister Soulsby, a skilled church fundraiser, to alleviate their financial struggles and raise funds for the congregation. Though Theron feels somewhat unsettled by Sister Soulsby and her husband's assertive tactics and their ability to extract money from people, he appreciates their help in securing an additional $100 annually for his salary. As Theron begins to sense a growing disconnect with Alice, who appears to be forging a closer bond with Gorringe, he finds himself wandering near Father Forbes's church in the hope of encountering Celia. Their paths intersect, and she graciously plays the organ for him before inviting him into a private room within the church. Inside, candles flicker, sculptures adorn the space, and a piano waits to be played. Theron, despite being a non-smoker, accepts a cigarette from Celia as they engage in a subtle exchange about the possibility of spending time together in her bedroom. Although receptive, they part ways before any bedroom-related activities occur. This encounter leaves Theron feeling rejuvenated. One day, Theron stumbles upon a picnic organized by Father Forbes's church, where he tries beer for the first time. He and Celia retreat to the woods but are interrupted by Theron's gardener. Fearing judgment from others, Celia bids Theron farewell with a simple kiss, leaving their interaction at that. 
Theron becomes consumed by thoughts of the kiss, misguidedly projecting his own guilt, he becomes convinced that Gorringe and Alice are involved in an affair. He also grows paranoid about the gardener, interpreting a recent flower sale to Gorringe as a source of unspoken suspicions. Following a disastrous dinner with Father Forbes, during which Theron exposes his growing obsession with Celia and his desire to leave the church, Forbes instructs his housekeeper to bar Theron from the premises. This strengthens Theron's belief that Forbes and Celia are engaged in a sexual relationship. Upon discovering that both Forbes and Celia may be in Albany, Theron boards a train to confront them. After witnessing Forbes leave Celia's hotel room, Theron confronts her. Celia explains that their kiss was a farewell gesture and that Theron has read too much into it. Forbes returns and clarifies that he and Celia are not involved romantically, they came to Albany so that Celia could meet a friend and distract herself from Theron's unsettling behavior. Defeated and deflated, Theron seeks solace at the Soulsby's residence. There, he confesses to having embezzled money from the church to finance his trip to Albany. The Soulsby's show unexpected understanding and, although they no longer want Theron to work in the church, they assist him in securing a real estate job in Seattle. Theron shares the news of his new job and his aspirations to enter politics with Alice, but she firmly expresses that their marriage is finished. Ultimately, the novel presents a poignant examination of how obsession and delusion unravel a man's career, friendships, and marriage, leaving a heartbreaking aftermath. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.